There's this old question that uh, was asked by some of the Greek philosophers. If you had a, a ship uh, that was going back and forth between one Greek island and the next, but on every voyage, one of the, uh, the planks that made up this, this wooden ship got changed. Uh, and every time it, it made the voyage, a new plank was added and one was taken away. At what point would you say it was a different ship and not the same? All right. It, when all the planks are changed and it's, an, it's made of entirely different matter, is it a different ship or is it still the same ship? Uh, right. There's, and, and what happens if the planks don't just change, but even the design is gradually changed? So it, it, it's a, a more seaworthy vessel or whatever. Right. The, the, the purification process is creating an internal change uh, that that will result in disidentification. But it's being done by removing certain sanskaras or tendencies, little by little, that each of them will have an effect on the whole. Uh, and so you can make one very small change in your behavior patterns and your whole life will be different. Just getting up for 4 a.m. meditation will have huge effects on your life. You might be tired more often, but uh, <laughs> you might have other more positive changes. Uh, but once you acclimate to it, it, it shifts uh, uh, many aspects. So everything, every habit pattern uh, that you shift is going to have larger consequences. So the, the purification, it is a, dis a disidentification, but it's probably not the total disidentification from the I thought. It's much easier to, to disidentify from certain of the intentions of the I, certain of its beliefs and projections to be removed and replaced. Uh, and uh, and the, the, the whole nature of who you believe yourself to be, to shift from the projection your parents had on you as a child, which is what the ego holds on to, to an archetypal projection coming from God consciousness that says you are a manifestation of divine lightning and the diamond mind, not of a person who was born to a particular family with uh, a lot of neurotic problems. And that in itself uh, it changes the way your identity is gonna function in the world, right? But then you can go beyond that level and uh, reach the, the zero point. And then there's no one to have these questions anymore. <laughs> question. Uh, so See, you this, like your questions. <laughs> so I do enjoy so. the questions. And the answers, thank you. Um, is, you explain kind of two kinds of disidentification, one that's a gradual disidentification and then one that's kind of the sudden illumination. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. And then you said the gradual path is what everybody's choosing, but also the sudden illumination comes from grace. So in a way, it's kind of not a, a choice. No, but it is because uh, the more you yearn for that, for, for complete liberation and God consciousness, and the less you hold on to any nostalgia for, uh, for the ego's projects or for, uh, to, to receive, uh, uh, let's say, approval from anyone in the phenomenal plane, present or past, uh, the, the, the more that you are free to discover who you are beyond uh, that matrix uh, of uh, uh, enmeshment in, in, the, in a collectivity. So uh, you want to get to non-duality and, and that's when the lightning bolt really hits, when that's all you want. So you, you become one-pointed and wholehearted. That's the centering level of consciousness. Once you're there, grace hits. Because the grace that you want comes from yourself. It doesn't come from another but it comes from a level of selfhood that has not yet unfolded. But the more you want it to, the sooner it happens. Mm -hmm.